come out without it. Now, if you were to plot this, say P versus R, and we're going to make the make the assumption that the the pressure at zero is less than the pressure in the red line. So basically, we're making the assumption this is a producer. The pressure at the you know, well or at zero R is something less than what it is in the reservoir. Okay, so this is the general shape of the curve. This is the general shape of the curve. Okay. And you know, so then somewhere out here in the steady state, you know, this would be some point out here. This would be R F. This would be. It actually doesn't have to be in a steady state, but just, just somewhere out there is RFPF. Okay. So let's imagine that our well is in the center of this room. And it's a producer, so the, the pressure in the center of this room in it is, is at its uh, lowest, and it gets higher as we go to the boundaries of the room. <coughs> everywhere. If that's the case, if it's a monotonically increasing away from the center of the room, would you agree that somewhere between me and the wall is a radius where the pressure is the average pressure in the whole grid block, in the whole room? Has to be, right? If it's monotonically increasing, the average is somewhere between me and the wall if I'm, if I'm in the center of the room. So. So if we have a well that maybe has some radius, there's some radius out here that we're going to call REQ, in which at REQ, so at R equal to REQ, the pressure is the average pressure. And we want to assign that average pressure the value to the grid block. PL. So remember last time we used the L indice for grid blocks in 2D. So we want to we want to say that the average pressure in the grid block is PL. So we're going to let, again, let's, let's look at our, I'm going to have to write this equation 10 times in this lecture, but let's look at it again. So we want to let P ref equal the pressure at the well. Then RF is equal to the radius of the well. Okay. So if I do that, the equation becomes this. Sorry. This is the pressure of the well. Then, if we evaluate this equation, 
at REQ, you get this equation. And remember, by definition, the pressure evaluated at REQ is PL. So we, we almost have what we need because remember what I said we were looking for is QW is equal to minus JLW PL minus P and F. So you can see this equation has all the right ingredients, right? I can move this over and I have a PL minus PF. I can then, you know, do something with this equation to solve for QW, and then I can define that J, that productivity index. Almost, right? It, it has all the right ingredients, but the problem is we don't know what REQ is yet. Right? We just said it's somewhere between the center and the edge of the grid, and it's the radius at which the pressure is the average pressure. But we don't know what that radius is. <coughs> uh, yeah, I mean, we're not, we're, it's an aerial view, we're not, in, yeah, in, including, but yeah, I mean, this is just, this is, we're just trying to do something smart or f for having a well in a very large grid bar, right? It's not going to be perfect, but we're trying to do the best we can. is we're going to go on and make some more approximations here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to write down, again, we in, 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 may, in coming up with this analytic solution, we made the approximation that, um, that, that it was steady state. Right? So we're going, to, we're going to keep that approximation. We're going to write a mass balance. So this is our L grid block with a well, some REQ. We're going to write a mass balance. On that L grid block. And since we made the assumption earlier with steady state, we're going to hold that, and so in that grid block, and this is a well in the center that has flow rate QW, so then the mass balance without, there's no steady state, so there's no accumulation, right? So the mass balance is just what's coming in and out. Right? Okay. And each of those guys, Q1 is equal to Go to that. Q Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. Huh? Oh, no, no, sorry. It's equal to zero. Sorry. So now here comes another assumption. The assumption is that all the grid blocks are square. 
that is delta x is equal to delta y. And in that event, if they're square, all these delta x and y's cancel, right? And then all of these essentially become the same, and I can plug them back into there. So then I have that equation. Let's go back up here for a second. Look at this equation. If I evaluate, remember, right, this is P2, this is P3, this is P4, this is P1. If all of them are the same, grid block, because the grid blocks are sides, they're homogeneous, right, then this distance here is delta x, right? So let's draw a radial line. Let's say this is r. This is r direction. And go back up to our equation at the top and evaluate r, evaluate this equation at r equal to delta x. If r equals to delta x, what is p of r? If r is equal to delta x, p of r is equal to what? p2. And that's the same if I go this way or that way or whatever. Right? So it's P1, P2, P2. So with that, we have that. We have that P4 is equal to P3 is equal to P2, is equal to P1, is equal to PL minus GW mu GW G phi KH times the log. And we evaluated this at delta X over REQ. Right? So the PL is because we have REQ as the reference pressure. I mean, the, rep the reference radius is REQ, therefore the reference pressure is PL. And the fact that I evaluated it at delta X means that it's equal to P1 and also P2 and also P3 and also P4. Therefore, if I plug that in, remember to rewrite it here, I had this mass balance. So if I plug that in there, then I get that, we could right away see that the four PLs cancel, which leaves only that term in the center, and the negative signs cancel out. There's a few more things that cancel, right? So the KH cancels there and there, the mu GW there and there, the Q 
QW, I can divide through. I can divide through the other side by QW, and that becomes a 1, right? So if I divide through by QW, this becomes 1. Right? And ultimately, if I then separate everything, I can get an equation that is multiplied by the inverse of the terms that are left in this term right here. What I get is pi over 2 is equal to the natural log of delta x on eq. Raise both sides, e to the minus pi over 2. Or raise both sides with the exponential and then solve for r equals r, r equivalent, sorry. I get that. Anybody got their calculator out? What is e to the minus pi over 2? Thanks, mathematical. There we go. So 0 0.20788. Delta x. So this thing is called the Piecemann correction. So some of you have done some reservoir simulation, some are internship or something. Did you hear anything about? Have you heard of this Piecemann correction before? So now you know where it comes from. And remember, there's lots of assumptions, right? Steady state square grid blocks. It's actually fairly easy to extend it to you know, varying delta x and delta y. So the, over the years, I mean, this was originally done in like the 50s. And over the years, everybody wants to you know, make their little incremental improvement on it. So you can, you, you can extend it to varying grid block sizes and everything. Right? So. Now that we know what R E Q is equal to, we know everything in that equation, right? So if we go back to that equation, you know, P L is equal to P natural log minus P W P W Q. So this was the equation that I wrote. So basically it's 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 this equation where we've evaluated now now R at R E Q, which makes the le the left hand side P P L. So then with that, we can solve.